Hi everyone, it's me Terry of the Yarn Joy podcast. Um, I had a request from one of my uh, viewers that she was wanting to know how I designed a graph gan uh, using using the corner to corner method, but to add some uh, letters um, like a name on top of your um, project or in the project somewhere, and so. I just thought that since I've just designed one that I want to do for, for an upcoming Christmas gift that I would just um, show you how I did it and kind of talk about it. Okay, so I designed this uh, blanket that I for my niece and uh, her name is Alanis, A-L-A-N-I-S, okay? And um, so what I did is for this project, I actually started with her name first, and I uh, charted out the letters, um, kind of the same, actually I think it's about the same size letters as far as the dimensions of them is when I did the banner that's in my craft room uh, with my channel name on on it and so I that's pretty much what I used and so I just charted out her name and see I had to overlap it here because my paper wasn't big enough <laughs> and um, I allowed the same number of spaces between the letters in with this project I have three well I have three spaces on either side of all the letters okay this one the N, see, is here, but then I also put it over here. This is part of the N as well, just so that way when I'm crossing off and doing the corner to corner, uh, I can see where it's going to be on the other part of the chart to get this part done. Okay, <laughs> but anyway, and then I did allowed a top margin of two squares. Oops two squares at the top and then two squares at the bottom of this banner piece. Okay, so once I did that, I counted how many squares across this whole banner is going to be, and I, it ended up being 66 squares. And the with the height of the letters and then two spaces at the top and the bottom, this piece is going to be, this piece up and down is going to be 14 uh, squares. Okay, so so far I had a piece that I knew that was going to be 14 squares high and 66 squares wide. Okay, so no, after I figured out that, then I decided, well, well, I, I was considering what to put this name banner on. And so uh, my niece likes bumblebees. And so I went on to a free clip art site and I found a picture of uh, a bumblebee that I liked. And so um, this image right here was just, it was not on a chart, it was just a clip art image, a free clip art image. And I took that picture and I actually sent it to Danica of Lady Love Design Boutique and I asked her to help me and we she uh, turned that image into a chart okay and I I told her that I needed it to be 66 inches wide I'm no I'm sorry <laughs> 66 squares wide okay the Mainly the thing I was concerned about is the width because since my name banner is 66 squares wide Then the this since it's going to be it's going to sit on top of that This has to also be 66 squares wide Okay, so that's what I did she did this chart for me and um send it to me. She does do custom charts where you can send her the image and she will do it for you for a uh, small fee and um, get it all fixed up for you. <laughs> so for this project I started with the lettering the name first and got my width that way. Okay, um, if you want to do it that way then uh, there's different ways you can do it. You can look online. Let me get my computer here. Um, here, I just went to Ravelry and I put, I did a pattern search for, I just put in uh, alphabet 
okay, for crochet. And see then, here's all these pages, and so I scrolled through and I was looking for um, the alphabet on a chart. And see, scrolling down, then see, I see these here. And they are um, alphabet charts that you can use. They're free, okay? So let's see, let me click on one here. Okay, see that? It's already the letters are already charted out for you. Now that's a that's that would be kind of tall, uh, depending on how big of a chart you need, how many squares high um, and wide you need the letters. Um, let's see. This one is a good one. It is a baby blanket. Uh, let's see. Okay, this is a baby blanket that is made with corner to corner squares. Okay, and that's a good um, letter design. Um, and in fact, I think this is the one that I looked at when I was doing my um, my lettering for my niece's name. And see, it is say that it's free, and um, yes. So then I just took that, went over to her website, and there you go. See. And then, so for these squares, the letters are one, two, three, four, five, about five blocks high. That's a good size. Uh, one, two, three, four, five. Oop, about five wide, so that's good also. Okay, so if, if you have trouble uh, charting out your letters on your own, you can find patterns like this because, I mean, it's for a baby blanket, but you can use that chart for the lettering that you need uh, for your design and since it is a free pattern then that's good because that way there's no copyright uh, infringement or, or anything if you're getting charts from somewhere else or whatever it always makes me feel better if I know that it's a free project that I'm getting my chart from and that way I'm not doing anything I shouldn't be doing <laughs> okay uh, so on Ravelry like I said you can just search for patterns under alphabet and you can um, there's just scroll through and there's other um, oh, what do you call them fonts I guess that's got like I said the letter charts that you can use um, that one's a pretty good one here right there Okay, so that's way there's that's places that you can get um, the letter charts that you you would need to design your piece. Um, also, you can go on over onto Pinterest and you search for pixel p i x e l see pixel alphabet. I did that, and see there's a lot of charts here. Okay. So um, that is. Uh, uh, some good places that you can find charts that you can use to to graph out um, for your letters okay so uh, you can do that first you can do the letters and then get your width by the the size of the letters that you want or the you know however many squares it takes to make the letter to form the letter um, and then just remember you got have to count these the spaces in between the letters um, to get it equaled even, you know. And then you count the width of it and then you know that the chart that you're looking for needs to be that same number of squares wide as your uh, letter piece. Like I said, this one is 66 squares, so my chart needed to be 66 squares wide also because you need them to match up, okay. Um, now, if you want to start with a chart, say, over on Repeat Crafter Me, okay, she has got some nice charts uh, for free on her website. Here's one in, that I um, clicked on and zoomed up so that way you, as just an example. So this polar bear chart has got 52 squares, 52 squares across, okay, and so if you wanted to use something like that and put the name across the top or, or across the bottom, wherever you want to put it, then your name banner for using this one would need to be 52 squares wide, matching up with the chart that you're using. Okay? 
So that's just an example. Um, you can also go on Ravelry and you can search for uh, graph gans and they'll, they'll, there will be patterns that you can find on there as well that would be a picture chart that you could use. Okay. Um, I did a project one time. It was a, um, well, let's, let's say, let's talk about the Christmas blanket that I did, the Christmas character blanket. Um, each of those squares were 25 squares wide. Okay. And I did three of them put together. So, the, so 25 times three is 75. So now if I would have put one, now that blanket course project has the words written up already. Um, so I didn't do have to do any lettering, letter charting, but if I would have wanted to change the project and have it where it's not saying Merry Christmas, but I wanted to say something else, then I would remember that my charts were 25 squares each. So that would be 25 times three is 75. So my piece was 75 squares across. And so my banner, if I would have wanted to change it to something else, okay, it would have to be 75 squares across. Okay, now, once I got that information, um, what I wanted to use, okay, then, let me move that out of the way, I was trying to figure out what kind, what size hook I wanted to use. So I took my yarn, uh, the same type of yarn that I'd want to use for the project, and I did a couple of uh, little swatch pieces, I guess you'd say. Uh, this one, I see I used an eye hook for this. And so I did it where there's one, two, three, four, five, six squares across this piece and six squares up and I measured it. And when I measured this piece using an eye hook, this piece, six squares, ended up being, um, let me remember now, <laughs> I've got on my notes, uh, five inches, I believe, is what I measured it. Um, Yes, five inches. I'm sorry, this is seven, seven uh, squares, sorry. So I measured this side here, and it's seven squares that measures five inches. So I took five inches divided by seven, and that gave me the measurement of each of the squares. And me, for my tension, using an eye hook, the measurement of the square is 0.714, okay, <laughs> if you want to be exact. <laughs> and um, so if I used an eye hook and my square makes is 0.714, okay, then I did that times 66 because that's what my chart's going to be. And if I did that, if I used an eye hook, it calculates to be 47 inches. So that means my piece is going to be 47 inches wide. Okay, and so I then made a piece using a J hook, okay, and I measured that. Um, this was one, two, three, four, five. I did five squares by five squares, and this measures out to be four inches. And so I did five, I mean, f sorry, the four inches divided by the five squares, and that gives me 0.8 for each of these squares. So if you took the 0.8 times 66, the width of my piece, that gives me 52 inches, well, between 52 to 53 inches. So that's a better size. So I decided for this blanket, because the, the um, recipient is a teenager, uh, I decided that I wanted to use a J hook because that's going to give me a bigger piece. Okay, so that's how I planned that out. <laughs> now, if you have, a, if you want your piece to be a particular size, okay, if you're not doing a graph GAN, well, if you're just doing a corner to corner project and then you want to put a name on it, you can do that too. And uh, so what you can do is if you know the measurement uh, that you want your piece to be, uh, say it's going to be maybe a baby blanket, and you want that baby blanket to be uh, 36 inches. Let's see if you can see that. I don't know. <laughs> 36 inches uh, across. Okay. So 36 inches. You divide that by the measurement per square. And remember, my measurement per square when I used a J hook is 0.8. Okay. So 36 inches divided by 0.8 
equals, that means my piece needs to be 45 squares across. Okay, so I keep uh, increasing doing my corner to corner until I get to 45 squares. Okay, and uh, that sh should give me the 36 inches that I need, roughly roughly but uh, now you can just keep going uh, you can do it that way you can start the piece if you're not doing a graph gain you just want to do a corner to corner piece you can start the piece and just keep going with the increases until one side equals the width that you want say it's going to be 36 you want it to be 36 inches wide if it's a baby blanket or something then once you hit 36 inches or close to it then you count the number of squares that you did on that one side and of course that would give you uh, the number of squares that you would need for the name banner that you're going to attach at the top right just so just the so the width square wise is the same as the name the banner okay that you're going to you're wanting to put into your piece okay and you can um, so that way you'll know when you can start decreasing uh, to have your corner to corner piece and then you'll put that name banner either at the top or you can attach it at the bottom um, however you want to do it and of course then you would go around the whole entire thing with a border of some sort and so that's what I plan to do for my niece's uh, project, her blanket. The name will be the name is going to be a separate, big, long rectangular piece that's going to be at the top, and then um, I'll do the this blanket piece, and then I'll um, whip stitch or attach the borders together. Okay, so um, that's how I plan on doing this project. So, um, I hope that helps. <laughs> I hope it wasn't just totally confusing. <laughs> um, so, and I hope it answers the question that the uh, my viewer had regarding the process on how I do it, how I do this um, design, or how do I how I design out the piece. Okay, um, so. Thanks so much for watching, and if you haven't subscribed, please do, and that way you can follow me along as I start that project <laughs> and uh, see how it turns out. <laughs> so thanks a lot, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.